you're watching The Ugly Inside, subscribe below. Welcome back to our end of season reviews. We'll do this one as a double header because I don't think both of these warrant uh, an entire full length video. But I'm with Tony from the original fans and Ewan and Chris from Saints Marching. So we're here to talk about Jeremy Pierre. How's my French boys? Very good. And Martin Caceres. So let's start with Pierre first of all. As Chris was saying off camera, he started well but uh, has finished well as well. But don't think about anything in between. <laughs> I think I, I like. I like his style of play. I like a versatile player. I think he started his career out as a as a wide midfielder before regressing back to the fullback role. So I think it'll be I think he'll be a big player next season. We mentioned, you know, if Saints could maybe try a three at the back, you could argue that he could be a good suitor for that kind of position that someone like Victor Moses or Oxlade Chamberlain has been filling for a top team. I think it will just be a case of staying injury free. We don't want to see a repeat of the Jay Rodriguez situation where you know, we see a player get a long-term injury and get released. To, uh, not get released. Sorry, get injured again. But I think. I think he has been. I think he's been a solid player when given the chance. I don't think he'll ever be a better player than Cedric. But I think, as a backup right back, we can say that he's a very, very good player. And Chris touched upon their versatility, and, and I think that was the reason why he was brought in as a utility player to play all the way along that right-hand side of the park. Seems a positive, forward-thinking player from the small clips that I've basically seen of him. Um, definitely one for the future. You can see why he was called for his versatility. And um, very interesting to see, one, if Claude Puel stays next season, and what role um, he sees for him in the team. And he was very unlucky to pick up at ACL. We took him out for the most part of this, this season. Uh, I mean, great to see him probably make an appearance in the very last game of the season against Stoke. And he's got glimpses of potential, and we brought him on a free and could potentially be a great signing for Sex. Yeah, you, re you really felt for him at the start of the season. Came in, new couples, make a good impression, probably uh, in, the, in the Premier League. One of, the, one, of the, one of the teams that he could maybe feature for. I think he would have pushed Cedric to start at the start of the season. Worst luck getting the injury, and it's effectively it's not a two year deal, it's effectively a one year deal now. So I think if he wants, he's really got to, got to push on this next season and make sure he's challenging Cedric for that, for that first team spot. Okay, on to Martin Caceres then, in on a free, uh, came in in the, well, after the January window, a bit of a, uh, a bit of a, I don't know, like a, a snap deal really. We we had Virgil van Dijk in, and Font left us, but Caceres was never given a chance, only until Middlesbrough a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, it, it seemed like a, a panic buy, if you would. I know he came in on a free, but I think we didn't have anyone in place when Fonte left, and we kind of panicked after that. And I think we did bring Caceres in. I mean, if rumours are to be believed, he's our highest earning player, yet he, he might go away with no more than, you know, 180 minutes of football under his belt. So it's a, it is an interesting one. I, I gave him a, the first few weeks because, you know, he'd been injured. I don't think he'd played competitive football in about a year. Um, but I think he did show that he's a good centre back. I think he's got a good pass under him as well, which obviously Puel clearly likes with Van Dyke with Stevens being good ball player and centre halves. Um, I don't expect him to be at the club next season. I think he might go back to kind of an Italy or a Spain where he's played before. Um, but I think it's difficult to say he's played bad. Um, but then again, it's difficult to rave about him with the money that he's potentially earned from three or four months ago. And he's certainly got the experience from playing at top level clubs, Barcelona, Juventus in particular. I'm really disappointed to see that he hasn't got enough time on the pitch. Uh, form is temporary, class is permanent. Certainly got the pedigree there. Um, judging, as you say, the clubs that he's played for, me personally, I would say that Florin Gardas does not have a future in the club. Why not see if we can get Caceres to come into the squad and be an integral part of it, you know? Well, you know, why do you think Buell kept uh, Caceres out? Obviously, Jack Stevens and Yashida were consistent, but a lot of cries were for Caceres because he had that experience, he had that quality to maybe maybe better than Yashida or Stevens during the Easter period. Sure, that there were numerous chances where Clopo could have started Caceres. I think there was obviously an underlying reason whether whether after a year of not playing, he, it took him a long, long time to build up that match fitness where where he could start. But 
Jack Stevens started off a bit shakily, and if, if Jack Stevens is keeping Caceres out of the team, he's obviously doing something right. I thought Caceres, when he came in against Middlesbrough, he did well, he did okay, but it's what you expect of a player of that sort of calibre, really. And uh, maybe maybe a shame that we haven't seen him more, but as as Chris said, I wouldn't be surprised if he's not in the next year. Okay, Chris, let's uh, summarise PA's uh, season as a, as a rating. I know we haven't seen much of these players, yeah. but what do you... What do you make of the half a dozen appearances of both I these think, players? In a word, unlucky. I think he's got the potential. I think he's at a, a good age, but he's not too young, he's not too old. I think, I definitely think he does have the potential to challenge Cedric. You know, we've discussed how maybe Cedric could leave in the summer, and if that was to happen, I know that I'd feel quite safe if Pierre was our first choice next year. Um, you know, you can't give him maybe more than a five or a six based on what he's done with the injury but that's entirely out of his control Caceres for the game that you've seen him play <laughs> yeah I think I think it's been a difficult one when we signed him or when we were linked with him it was the whole fact of oh yeah this former Barcelona centre-back coming to you know little old Southampton in Hampshire but I think he's been good but I think there's there's got to be some kind of reason whether it was his inability to get match fit whether he didn't get on with Puel I think there's got to be something that stopped him from starting. I think there's got to be something there because, as you, as we've mentioned, we went what five games without winning, three games without scoring. We should have changed more than just Buffar for Redmond at that point. I think that was when Caceres should have come in earlier. Is it possible to get a rating? I'm going to say six. I'm going to say okay. six. Tony, from what I've seen on the pitch, six. I think he could be one of these players who could be a very consistent seven game in, game out. Like Stephen Davis. And to Jerry Pierre? Difficult to say in that respect. I would say five at the moment, and possibly if he would play regularly, seven. Okay, you and summarise. Um, but I think Pierre, unlucky. Caceres, there's an underlying reason. I think that's clear to see. Otherwise, he would have played um, because of how good he's been in the past. You don't play for Barcelona in the events of your rubbish do you know what I mean so I'd give both a 6 out of 10 um, I hope PA stays next year even if Claude goes Caceres I can't see but I think he'd be a good squad player if maybe we can bring those wages down a bit because there's quite a lot of money yeah and I have to echo those thoughts by like pretty much everyone here you can't it's hard to warrant anything higher than a 5 or a 6 for both the players both very unlucky not to get their opportunities in the first team but that's us for Jerry and PA and Martin Cateris' review. Leave us your thoughts in the comments below. Leave us your likes and subscribe for more.